G'day, I'm James from the Global Math Project, and I have a very unusual question for us today. It's a very human question, though it doesn't seem that way at first. In fact, the Global Math Project is all about our human relationship with mathematics, in two senses of the word. Mathematics itself is full of these wonderful storylines of beauty, intrigue, mystery, challenge, delight, and joy. Plus, there's our human historical relationship with mathematics. After all, we've been doing mathematics for thousands of years. There's got to be something to it. In fact, the story of the development of math is full of intrigue, mystery, and joy as well. And we want to talk about both aspects. In particular, during the Global Math Week, we'll come up with one particular story of mathematics which is astoundingly joyful. All right, very exciting for 2017. But for now, here's my interesting question. My very human, non-human question. It goes as follows. How many degrees are in a Martian circle? Whoa, indeed, a very non-human question at first, it seems. Okay, how many degrees in a Martian circle? How could I possibly think my way through that? Uh, okay, well, actually, one approach, one approach. Let's ask the analogous question for us on Earth. How many degrees are in an Earthling circle? Well, we know the answer to that, 360 degrees. Ha, huh, but that begs another question. 360, think about it, that's a very strange number. Who chose the number 360 out of the blue? What's that got to do with it? You had to think of a number that's just on your own. Would you come up with 360 as the first choice? Very strange. So where did that come from? Well, actually, if you look at the history of mathematics, as you go on the internet or look at the history books, you'll find math historians aren't actually clear on why us humans chose that particular number for the number of degrees in a circle. There's certainly lots of theories out there, and there's one very compelling theory that I'm going to go with today. So let's stick with this one theory, one of the many, and uh, let's use it as a wonderful thought exercise to go from the Earthlings answer and ask the analogous question for Martians. Okay, here goes. Um, it is known that this number 360 was being used by the Babylonians some 3,000 years ago. So the question is, what made them choose the number 360? Well, let's think of it this way. Okay, uh, so imagine you're an Earthling plonked on this particular planet and, and charged with the task, come up with a good number of degrees for a circle. Hmm. So you're going to think circles, circles, cycles. What's a good number of a cycle for a circle? Well, if I'm an earthling on this planet, there's one very natural cycle that sticks in your brain. It's actually the number of days in a year. We experience years all the time. We go from winter to spring to summer to fall, from winter to spring to summer to autumn. We go through a natural cycle. So if I think cycle, I naturally think days of a year. So the Babylonians were very aware of the number of days in a year. They knew it was 365. In fact, they knew it was 365 and a quarter. Very clever folk back then. So that makes you then wonder, well then why didn't they choose the number 365 and a quarter for the number of degrees in a circle, if we're going with this particular theory for that origin of that number? Huh, all right, now let's be very human again. Let's be human. 365 and a quarter, think about it. Do you want to do mathematics with the number 365 and a quarter all the time? Ugh, it's horrible. No, of course you don't. So you probably want to round that to a friendlier number. So let's think about this. What would you round it to? Now, 365 and a quarter. If I round it to the nearest integer, I get 365. So maybe you want to work with the number 365 for the number of degrees in a circle instead. Or, actually, you might choose to round it not to the nearest integer, but say to the nearest 10. Let's, let's just go for a big, chunkier number. 365 to the nearest 10 actually rounds up to 370. But according to this theory, the Babylonians didn't round up to 370. They chose instead to round down to 360. So rounding the nearest 10, I'd naturally choose 370. Why do they go down to 360 in this particular theory? Huh, all right, now let's be our human selves again. Let's think our way through this. All right, we're doing mathematics 3,000 years ago and all we basically got our heads. We've got no pencil and paper, we have to do it all in our heads. So often in mathematics, you want to halve things and take thirds of things and quarters and so forth and fifths. So arithmetic, which of these numbers is friendliest with arithmetic? Well, if I'm halving, 365 is not very really friendly. It's not divisible by two, so I probably wouldn't go with 365 only because it's not natural to halve it. I can halve 370, I can halve 360. What about dividing to three, taking a third of something? Well, 360 is divisible by three, so that's good, but actually 370 isn't. So if you just want to do a third, 370 is a bit awkward. What about quarters? Actually, 360 is divisible by four, 370 isn't. Ooh, 360 is looking good. In fact, 360 is divisible by five as well. Actually, so is 370. 360 is also divisible by six, 370 isn't. Uh, divisible by seven, Actually, really, anything is divisible by seven. Let's not worry about sevens. Eight, 360 is divisible by eight. 370 is not. Nine, 360 divisible by nine. 370 is not. 10, all right, they're both divisible by 10. 11, ugh, awkward, no. 12, this is divisible by 12. This is divisible by, uh, what, 15 and 18 and 20. It's divisible by lots of things. 360 is a highly divisible number. So if you're doing arithmetic in your head, it's a very friendly number to work with. 370 is not very divisible, by, not divisible by many things at all. So let's not go with 370. Let's make math easy for ourselves and go with 360. That is a very human answer about why you might want to go from the number, to the number 360 from 365 and a quarter.
great. All right, so there is one very plausible theory about why we Earthlings came up with the number 360. So what would be the analogous reasoning for Martians? All right, so now you're a Martian being plonked on the planet Mars, and you're being charged with the task of coming up with a number of degrees in a circle. So how would you reason? Well, in this, this approach, you say, okay, a natural cycle I'd experience is a Martian year. How many days are in a Martian year? Well, I actually happen to know the answer to that. Uh, we Earthlings don't call them days. We actually call them souls. And I happen to know there are 668 souls in a Martian year. So if you're on Mars, you'll experience a cycle of 668 souls. So you'll probably nat naturally associate the number 668 degrees for a circle. Now here's the question. Do you think Martians want to do arithmetic with the number 668 all the time? So here's a lovely thought experiment for you. What number would you, would you personally round this to to make life easier for you if you're doing that arithmetic on Mars? So how many degrees are in a Martian circle, do you think? Lovely stuff. Thank you.